Hello everybody, welcome back to Being the Odds. It is Monday, May 13th, 2024. We are back with our best bets of the day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zach and welcome to Being the Odds. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a pick. We post these best bet videos every single day. We're going after our first 15,000 subscribers in our first year on YouTube. Really excited to have y'all here. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. So to recap yesterday's results, uh, we had a great day. Went nine and four yesterday. Uh, members only best bet. Our biggest bet the entire day was Pacers minus five and a half. What a fucking haymaker. Like my Lord, that was, that was a beat down. Like I've never seen, I think on the, I think on the broadcast, they were talking about the Mother's Day massacre. I and mean, that was a pretty big, that was a beat down. That was impressive by the Pacers. And we're going back and the Knicks are the walking wounded. So we'll see how that goes in game five. Uh, Brewers first five minus 0 0.5 gives the biggest scary props we could have had. Orioles money line, never a scare that sucked. Oilers 60 minute money line, they cheap shot at McDavid. The the Canucks had no, I mean, they had absolutely no reason to win that game. and Or not no reason, but like no business winning that game. They played out of their minds. Good for them, but a tough loss here. Um, luckily, our best our best bet, we got a huge dub. And then we then our free picks, we killed it. Nuggets plus two and a half, winner. They figured something out. They absolutely figured something out. And, um, you know, Anthony Edwards looked awesome. Uh, Cat looked like complete shit. Looked like the most, like, soft, zesty player ever. Um, Gobert looks lost on the defensive end, weirdly enough. Uh, but Nuggets plus two and a half, that was a win. Over 204 and a half in Denver, Minnesota. That was a win. Over 218, Knicks and Pacers. If the Knicks had any life at all, that this game goes way over. But it is what it is. Mariners minus one and a half, easy dub against the A's. Royals money line, easy dub against the Angels. Uh, over eight, Chicago and Pittsburgh. Um, what a freaking cover. Five runs in the 10th inning. You love to see it. Gia, that one's for you. Big dub, easy win. Um, and over eight and a half, Cleveland, um, Cleveland and White Sox. That game had no business going under it. It went under. Super frustrating. White Sox left so many men on base. So many men on base. Tough loss there. Then we hit some totals in the NHL as well. So over six and a half, Edmonton and Vancouver. That was a win. Under five and a half, Florida and Boston. That was a win. And Boston also got robbed. I mean, by the way, that, that under five and a half was about as sweaty as you could possibly get in the NHL. And the and, But Boston absolutely got robbed. The fact that that goal counted, that second goal for Florida, is absolutely ridiculous. That was 100% goalie interference. I don't know what I don't know how much more blatant it can get, but you know they 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 said they left the call there, but it is what it is. Um, overall for the year we're killing it. Um, so we had a three and one NBA day, two and one in the NHL, four two in the MLB. Um, we had we went we're three forty nine two eighty four in the NBA, ninety seven six two on best bets. NHL two ninety seven two seventeen six two and forty two at forty six on best bets. MLB one nineteen ninety six thirty six and twenty eight on best bets. Crushing all of these seasons up a ridiculous amount of units. I can go through it here if y'all want to next video. Um, but we have a loaded slate again today, this Monday. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight picks I'm going to give you guys here today. Let's jump into it. I'm going to start with our first play, which will be the Cavs plus eight and a half versus the Celtics. I think the Cavs can steal a game here. I think this is a game that they can win against Boston where I would not be surprised if they went out right. I might even sprinkle a little bit on the money line, maybe. Uh, but this is a bounce back spot for them. They got smoked. Um, in game three, but they're going to be playing at home. And the Celtics have shown they have absolutely no answer for Donovan Mitchell whatsoever. And I mean, whatsoever. And the Cavs almost play, to me, they almost play better without Jared Allen or without Evan Mobley, like one of them. They just have one regular center. Um, and today it looks like Jared Allen's probably not going to play again because he's got a rib injury. And they're going to play with their lineup that makes the most sense. Plus, when you take out Jared Allen out of the mix, you then put in Isaac Okoro instead. So you have you wing guys who can guard Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum as about as well as they can. Jason Tatum played absolutely unbelievable last game. That was the first good game he's played this entire series. I don't really see that continuing. And role players play way better at home, as we all know. Um, Cleveland's obviously at home today. Uh, the sharp money is heavy on Cleveland. And I get eight and a half points at home. That's a ridiculous amount of points. I'm rolling with Cleveland here, plus eight and a half versus the Celtics here tonight. Next, we'll go the under, 215 and a half in Oklahoma City and Dallas. Um, the sharp money day is heavy on the under. Both of these teams match up very, very well defensively against each other. I've been saying it all series. The unders are two and one so far in this series. Dort and Williams are great matchups for Luka and Kyrie. PJ is a really, PJ Washington's actually a very good matchup for SGA. They match up size-wise. 
He's still very quick and athletic. Very good defensive matchup for um, for, for the Mavericks with P.J. Washington on SGA. About as good as you can do. Uh, Lively is a good matchup for Chet. And there's a, and with and really the and also Luca and Kyrie actually try on defense. Oklahoma City is very very underrated defensively because their stars actually try on defense. And speaking of trying, um, like I said, Luca and Kyrie are actually trying. But when you look at like the way these teams play offense, more importantly, is they play a lot of iso ball because they have so much. They, they have so many good players offensively that they just throw them the ball and they say, "Go get us a bucket." And yes, that may work. With score, then that maybe work a little bit offensively, of course, because I mean they're both in the second round of the West, which is a big fucking deal. It's like making the Eastern Conference Finals um, in the East. But they play a lot of ISO ball, which means there's going to be a lot of late clock shots, late late shot clock shots, which means we're going to have less possessions, and this game's going under. Even though both these teams are very high flying, they do score a lot. The game is going to go under because of just the way they play offense. So I'm going with the under two fifteen and a half Oklahoma City and Dallas. Next, you're going with the Padres minus one point five versus the Rockies. I like Vasquez more than I like Hudson. Uh, Vasquez is that much better than Hudson, but Hudson's been horrible this entire year. Has a six-something ERA. Uh, San Diego's bullpen is a lot better than Colorado's, which means even if Hudson gets pulled out um, early, he's going to be backed up by people who suck in the Colorado bullpen, while San Diego's bullpen is actually pretty solid. San Diego's bullpen um, is, like I said, very is about league average, while Colorado's is bottom third of the league. Um, on top of that, when you're looking at this team, the Padres lineup is just so much better than Colorado's. Colorado is just tanking, hoping to God to get a good draft pick. I, I like the Padres here at home to win and win convincingly here at home by more than by two or more here today. So I'll go with the Padres here, minus 1.5 uh, versus the uh, versus the versus the Rockies. Next, we'll go the over eight and a half in Cleveland and Texas. Um, I know I had an over for Cleveland yesterday, but I think the over is the play here. Uh, today. When you look at this, BB and Lorenzo is a point so far this year. They have like mid four ERAs. They're both pretty much just average. Um, and the Rangers lineup is still very, very, very good, even with some injuries. And Cleveland has shown offensively they can score against mediocre to bad pitching. And that's exactly what they get today because the bullpen for the Rangers is a mess. Um, and their starting pitching today with Lorenzen is okay at best. Uh, on top of that, the Rangers lineup should be able to hit a very good Cleveland bullpen because Cleveland's bullpen is very, very, very good. I mean, when you look at this team up and down the line, up up and down there, up and down their pitching staff. I mean, they're number one, they're number one bullpen ERA team in the entire league, and that would scare me a little bit with the over if they weren't playing a team like Texas, who is very, very good. They're not playing against the White Sox like they were yesterday. And the White Sox can't hit the damn beach ball, but Texas is very, very good. I'm rolling with the over eight and a half here um, in Texas and Cleveland. Next, we're going to go with the no runs first inning in Kansas City and Seattle. Uh, Singer and Kirby on the mound today for both these teams are both very, very good. Uh, both teams typically start slowly offensively against very, very good pitching, and that's what we're dealing with here today. And Seattle is not exactly a hitter's park, not exactly a hitter's climate. I'm rolling no runs first inning in Kansas City and Seattle. I do like the under in this game as well, but under seven is just so, I mean, that's just so low. I can't go with that, but I can go with the under, I can do no runs first inning. I feel good about that. And then last year, the Orioles' first five, minus 0 0.5 versus the Blue Jays. Uh, the Blue Jays have been disappointed this entire year. They, 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 are, they are so disappointing. They have all the talent in the world, and they're just not putting it together. Now, I'll take Burns over Berrios slightly, although Burns has, I mean, the ERAs are basically the same. Um, but I like, I like Corbin Burns better than I like uh, Berrios here. Um, the Orioles lineup is substantially better than the Blue Jays lineup, and the Jays are traveling today. Orioles are not. And the and Baltimore being at home, coming off of a beatdown, they got absolutely smoked by the Diamondbacks uh, last game. And this is a game where I feel like they're going to start quickly. And again, their bullpen has been good, but they've been rocked recently. And I think they might be a little thin in that department. And even though the Blue Jays have the worst bullpen in the league, I just think the Orioles are going to come out hot. The Blue Jays will not. And I think they're good. I think there might be a little opposite trends here where the, where the, where the Jays' bullpen maybe plays a little better. The Orioles' bullpen, bullpen plays a little bit worse. I would rather see the Orioles just start out hot, win the first five innings, win the first half. And that's what I think they're going to do next. So I'm rolling with the Orioles' first five minus 0 0.5. Versus the Blue Jays. And again, the lineup for the Orioles is so much better. And the Blue Jays have all the names, but they're not good. So I'm rolling with the Orioles here. First five minus 0 0.5. Next, we're going to be under five and a half in Carolina and New York. Uh, this number is just, I just think they're going to go under. Um, you know, Shesterkin had a bad game against the Hurricanes. Specifically a bad first period. 
and the um, and 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 uh, the Rangers picked it up offensively later on this game, second and third period. But this game just feels like an under game. This feels like a pendulum swing game where it was high scoring last game, maybe low scoring this game. Um, plus, New York knows if they lose this game, they're in serious shit. Because if they go back to Carolina, it's three two. Carolina wins that game at home. Game seven after maybe blowing a three zero lead. Um, I think the I think the defensive intensity will be through the roof, and Carolina is fighting for their lives. So the defensive intensity on from Carolina will also be through the roof. So I'm rolling the under five and a half Carolina New York here in this spot, and I'm going the Hurricanes my line. I think they win this game um, as well. That's the last pick we have because I think the Hurricanes are going to win this game versus the Rangers. I don't really I don't really know why, but actually I do know why. They outplayed them in games two, three, and four, and just can has saved the Rangers' ass every single time. And I think that something happened in this last game in game four where the Hurricanes figured something out. It might be a little bit too might be a little too uh, too late here. But um, I like the Hurricanes here to win this game, get it back to Carolina, and we'll see what happens there. Now, just so you all know, we do have four other plays today, our four members only best bets. You can get us at ZDMBets.com slash picks. As a member, you get all our members only plays every single day, which most profitable best bets on a day-to-day -day basis. On top of that, you do have a direct line to me. So any game you're concerning betting, reach out to our hotline number, get a guaranteed response back about any game you're concerning betting. Any of our free picks do on YouTube, send to you for videos come out. That would take advantage of early lines, early odds. Hit the website ZDMBets.com slash picks. ZDMBets.com slash picks. ZDMBets.com slash picks. So guys, go lock up those picks. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. I'll see you all tomorrow.